I hope I would leave a legacy of joy, a legacy of、uh, real compassion. Of, because I think there is a great joy in real compassion. I don't think that you can know joy apart from caring deeply about people, caring enough about people that you actually do something. But I, I have a feeling like if my life is motivated by my ambition to leave a legacy, what I'll probably leave as a legacy is ambition. But if my life is is motivated by the power of the Spirit in me, if I live in the awareness of the indwelling Christ, if I allow His presence to、uh, guide my actions, to guide my motives, those sorts of things, that's the only time I think that we really leave a great legacy.、Um, many years ago, when when I was <clears throat> in this for ministry, not for money. I worked with a band called Zion Ministries. It wasn't really a band; it was really a retreat organization. So I got involved with a with an organization called Zion Ministries because I felt like it was a good balance of music and teaching. I was involved in that for a few years, however many years that might be. We made a custom album, and "Sing Your Praise to the Lord" was the first song on the album, and that song probably has had more to do with with flip flopping my life around than anything else, any other single event. Or thing. We're back now with Gary Jones、um, and your host Rich Mullins. Well, tell us how this sweatshirt, for example, which sells for only twenty dollars,、uh, <laughs> says, "Live like you'll die tomorrow, Rich Mullins. Die knowing you'll live forever. Live right." How does how does this relate to your life on the road? I mean, what kinds of?、Uh... It's just what it says. So you could die tomorrow, like this. Die. Knowing you'll live forever, and if you know Christ, well, you'll die knowing you'll live forever. And if you don't, and you live like you'll die tomorrow, but you don't live right,、um, it could be a drag. I mean, like you'll go to hell and stuff, and that's not good. There's good and there's bad, and good is is good, and bad is bad, and bad's going to hell, and good's going to hell. Is that good? Thank God for editing. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do a song that's、uh, gonna be on an album that、um, will be out in February, and it's called、uh, Rich Mullins' Pictures in the Sky. And I'd sure appreciate it if you'd buy a whole lot of copies for all your relatives. This is a good album, Pictures in the Sky. Where the title come from? Yeah, and, and just the idea of pictures. In well, the sky. my car broke down. It, well, it hadn't really broken down. <laughs> you and your cars.、Come、yeah,、on. really. But I had to take it in for repairs, and a friend of mine, Dave McCracken, dropped me off at, at the place, and then left me, abandoned me, <laughs> and and、uh, gave me two tickets to Barbara Mandrell country. Yeah. And we took it to the garage. To this garage right down on on Broadway.、Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there I was on 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 Broadway on Lower Broad even, and、uh, really depressed area. And I was walking around. It was just a real cloudy day, and I thought, you know, it looks so much nicer up there than it does down here. <laughs> and and、uh, so I walked up to Barbara Mandrell Country with my free ticket, and、uh, Dave was was up there, and、uh, and I said, Hey, what do you think of this? And I and I sang him a couple lines, and he really liked it. So I finished it. That's good. Oh, this、All、is、right. great. We have a birthday cake for you. And there's a dog、you. on the cake. Yes. Now, hang on. Somebody has to read this.、Uh, could somebody go over there and read it? Rich, you could read it for us.、Okay. What does it say? Full, full of wind, stuffed with cake. Happy birthday, Rich. Oh, that's so complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you well, very much. There are th little clouds on there, or are there yes, just、uh, those little clouds、mm. on there. And there's a doggy. What does a doggy stand for? Yes. There's a dog on my、oh, outfit. Oh, oh, okay. That, in fact, is my own personal dog. Is it? Yeah. On the cake. Well, you will not、uh -huh. want to eat him then. I can、uh, smell the cake from here. It, it is、great. delicious. And if I would have known that when I was starving for breakfast, I wouldn't have gone to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Rich Mullins is our guest. We're going to be giving away some cassettes. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Winds of Heaven, Stuff of Earth, this latest album. Is this your dog? That is my dog. She just got hit yesterday. No, no I'm so depressed. Is she with you here? No, she's not with she's us. She's home. She's still home. Yes. Okay. Not to her eternal home. She just got nicked. But I think she just did it to get attention. I told her I was going to shoot her next time she got hit. She does it, and it's, it's kind of her way of pouting. Does she chase cars? No, she races with cars. Races with cars. Yeah, she's a very fast dog, but she wasn't fast enough. 
I understand that the session. Now, folks, you that have seen the album cover, this is a great picture. Uh, this is in my top ten of favorite album covers, too. Oh, yeah, mine, too. I, I like this. It just looks very casual, very um, very together. You look like you just enjoy it. I didn't know it was your dog, though, but this, I understand yeah. the dog just kind of came in and sat down, and that was it. Oh, she she knew what was going on. Curry is, is the <laughs> Queen of Bellsburg. <laughs> I was at a radio station, and I had forgotten how much I liked uh, Never Picture Perfect. And then I was thinking about that when I was listening at the radio station. And um, I went, you know, this is an album that was pretty much me and Reed, just the two of us. That was the album. Reed and I have conflicted a lot. But on Never Picture Perfect, um, Reed really heard something in my songs that I didn't hear in them themselves. And he really pulled it out. I guess I, I, I had matured enough that I began to really respect what a producer does. And I, I, I realized, man, I... I uh, sometimes have like clung to my ideas not because they were the best ideas but just because they were mine and in 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 his work he was able to take uh what i had written and really uh amplify it so that was that was a great experience you know i i when i first heard your the world is best i remember a volume one i can't imagine there even being a volume two of it getting any better so how is it different and how is it the same well i think it's uh it's the same in that it's um well, it's kind of like volume one by itself. There are, there are several different musical styles that we kind of go into, and so volume one is different and the same, and volume two is the same in that it's different and it's the same. <laughs> Am I making <laughs> sense? This is like this. <laughs> I keep answering this question, and I keep going, no, that's not really true. That, that uh, confusing moment brought to you by Rich Moments. Yeah, Thank you very really. Much. Uh, <laughs> Probably, I guess what you're saying is that it's unique, it's different, musical styles that are represented are different, but lyrically maybe it's the same. I'm trying to figure him out. That's a scary thing. That's yeah. <laughs> I would just say, if you liked Volume 1, you will probably like Volume 2. Yeah. And if you didn't yeah. like Volume 1, you may like Volume 2, so go ahead and buy it anyway. <laughs> so so you, can't, you, you can't lose with Volume 2. That's you the moral. You can't lose with Volume 2. The reason that I like Liturgy, Legacy, and Ragamuff Man was because there were so many people involved and there was so much conflict and uh, to watch that all get hammered out and you end up with an album and you go man this shouldn't have worked but I think it does um, that was great when we started making the album I, I pretty much handpicked the guys that were gonna play on it because they were all guys who I knew to be very real Christians doesn't mean that they're dirty Christians doesn't mean that they're messed up Christians they are they were all men who were not afraid to say, I don't understand that. They were all men who were willing to say, I have a struggle with that, or I don't have a struggle with that. They were all people who recognized that God had met them at the point of their need, that God had endowed them and empowered them with certain gifts that he had for them. And they recognized the goodness of God in meeting them where they needed to be meted and, and empowering them with his spirit when they did not deserve that gifting, but it's because God delights in them, because God loves them, because God is tickled pink with them, that he continues, not because we're great, but because of who God is. And the guys that, that I played with are pretty much guys that I've known for a good while. They all have struggles. They all have hang-ups. They all have shortcomings. They all have talents. They all have gifts. They all have a faith that even though it, it doesn't look like the kind of faith you see on TV, it's a very profound and a very down-to-earth and, I think, a very spiritual faith. Um, let's jump to the record just a little bit, because, I mean, it's the Brothers Keeper Tour. The name of the album, um, very cool name for a record, because I think it's been on everybody's mind, and yet I've heard that phrase my whole life, mm -hmm. you know? And yet I've never known a Christian record that had that title. You, by now you would have think somebody would have already thought of that. I bet know? someone has. But they I, never did it. Yeah, I, I just never find anything that I've ever done that someone hasn't done before and probably done better. But it's so simple compared to some of your other titles of your records. You yeah. Know? I mean, it seems like, why did he name it that? And this is like so, so, uh, so simple. Well, we were just going to call it songs because I thought that would be a, a real funny joke, but then no one else thought that it was very funny. Just songs would have been the original title? Yeah, because, because of all the other titles having been so long, and I thought, well, that would be funny just to call this songs. That would be... But no one else got the joke, so uh, we decided not to make a joke out of the title, and we called it Brothers Keeper. But we had some other interest. We, we thought about calling it Too Many Chiefs and Not Enough Native Americans, and, um, you know, kind of 
poking fun at whatever we could. A while ago, uh, Beaker and uh, Mitch and I wrote a musical called Canticle of the Plains. And it's uh, based on the life of Francis of Assisi, which, uh, of course, I think we wrote the musical just because we liked the title, and the title makes no sense in terms of Francis of Assisi, but he's still kind of a hero of ours, and so we decided what to do was to change him from being uh, a 12th century Italian saint into a 19th century American cowboy. And uh, so we basically followed the life of Francis of Assisi, but we just set it in the American West as opposed to medieval Italy. And uh, this is a song that Frank sings. Oh, we also changed his name from Francis to Frank on account of how Francis doesn't sound very cowboyish. Um, well, thank you. Mitch is always so, so generous to uh, let us perform some of our stuff. We're going to be doing another record up here in the fall. And uh, the next few songs are, are uh, songs that will be on that record. This fall, besides doing an album with Mitch, we're also going to do a, another Ragamuffin album. And this one is just going to be 10 songs about Jesus. And this is one of them. Well, you did not have a home. Well, it's off the Ragamuffin album we're going to start working on this fall, which I can't wait. This guy is such a blast to be around. So, um, but it's just... It's, uh, let's see, it's called You Did Not Have a Home, and it goes, uh, you did not have a home. There were places you visited frequently, you'd take off your shoes and scratch. Because you do that at night, do you scratch your feet at night? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I love to do that. I find out that there's a lot of people that do that. Oh, anyway, well. the lyric. Uh, <laughs> there are places you visited frequently, you'd take off your shoes and scratch your feet, because you knew that the whole world belonged to me, but you did not have a home. You did not take a wife. There were pretty maids all in a row lined up to touch the hem of your robe, but you had no place to take them, so you did not take a wife. Wow. Do you think it's funny? I love that. That's great. Oh, good. Any autobiographical little thing going on there? Or? No, it's, that's just about Jesus. Oh, you did not have a home. 